Welcome back. This is part two of the CNC plasma table conversion build. We're going to pick right up where we left off in part one. First thing we're going to address is our gear to stepper motor issue. Found a solution for that. I'm going to get that tigged up and install those. Then we're going to work on mounting the rails to the table. I just measured the distance I needed and marked it every so often. Make sure that we had our rack on straight and clamped it down to the table. I cleaned everything really good and that's why it's nice and shiny. And now what I'm gonna do is just kind of go in and back and forth, one side to the other. Just tack that in place. Finished a couple real short fusion welds between our track and our rail. Spaced every, every so often on each side. And I hopped around to try to mitigate any sort of warpage, made sure my clamps stayed nice and tight. Just repeat it two more times for our other two rails. for the torch holder was just used a piece of aluminum angle cut it down the size drilled our holes that matched up to the holes on our carriage bolted that on and then took the actual torch holder attached that to the piece of aluminum angle and that'll give us our carriage and torch holder combo So now we've got our rails and carriages and stepper motor gears and everything situated. What we need to do is attach it to the table. So in order to do that, we're going to need some sort of bracket that's going to hold the 2x2 two two section. It had to be custom designed. So I'll insert a picture of the crappy drawing that I came up with and sent over to Steve at Mayhem Metalworks. Went back and forth with Steve a couple times told him what I was trying to do and he took that crappy drawing that I had and sent me back a good drawing and we, we changed a couple more things and then he sent me another one and once we were both happy we thought it was the right thickness we had the right dimensions for everything uh, and we were both happy with it he told me that he was going to cut out a test piece now bear in mind it was only a couple hours from the time that I sent him my initial design to the time that he had it finalized, drawn up, and was ready to cut it on the laser CNC. That's why I love working with Steve at Mayhem Metalworks. If you have anything custom that you need cut out, he is definitely the man. I know I keep mentioning him in social media and Facebook, but uh, really, yeah. If you're not working with Steve, then you're working with the wrong guy. So a couple days later, I received this. Yes, this is way too thin, wrong material, but this was just a prototype. We wanted to make sure that the hole spacing was correct and that the offset from the table was correct. So I got this, bolted it to the table, and 
look perfect. Of course it did. Not because of me and my piss poor drawing abilities, but because of Steve and his know-how and immediately emailed Steve and said, hey man, this works. Uh, I need four of them. Before I knew it, in the mail, I received these. Quarter inch thick, regular steel, and an exact duplicate other than the thickness of the prototype and down perfectly to the drawing. He did add a little custom flare though, which I was not expecting but was very happy to see. He took the Haslip out of the Haslip Cycle Works logo and cut it into each one of these brackets. And he sent me four of these. These bolt to the table and will hold the 2x2 two two tubing. Now you're probably looking saying, ah, Rod, that looks a little bigger than 2x2. Two two. You'd be correct. 2x2 two two tubing. The reason I went larger than 2x2 two two for this opening is if this were the rail that's on our table, I wanted to have some adjustment in case I screwed something up during the assembly of the table or whatever the case may be. I wanted some leeway. So what I'm going to do is weld four nuts to this metal plate that Steve made up for us and we're going to put bolts through that and that's going to allow me to move this rail as I need it to make it perfectly level and perfectly true to the surface of the table so we don't have any issues later on with the torch hitting the workpiece or anything like that. Because remember, there is no automatic torch height control on this bad boy. We're going to go pretty budget on this. I don't have the money for the fancy torch controllers and all that stuff. So it's going to be a set the height, manually lock it in, and run your cuts. So having a rail that dips an eighth of an inch in one corner is going to totally screw up this whole thing. So I needed to be able to mitigate any sort of errors that may have been on my part when I assembled the table. I already went ahead and bolted a couple of them to the table. I'm going to show you that. So here's one of the brackets bolted to the table using the 5 8 hardware that is standard on all the sort of flat stuff. Bolts come through cinch it up and that is heavy enough and sturdy enough that I could lift the entire table with this bracket now on the back exact same bracket but as you can tell it's spaced out and it's spaced out because the torch actually sits on the front of that 2x2 two two tubing that's going to run across the table so what I needed to do was have enough space for that 2x2 two two rail to come back and have the torch as close as possible to the edge of the table so I can get the most out of my cutting area. Um, it'll make more sense when it's all kind of bolted together. Take the brackets off. I'm going to clean everything up. I'm going to put a coat of high temp black paint on the table itself. The legs are already red. Um, we'll paint these brackets after I weld on those adjustment nuts that I was talking about. Take our 2x2 two two rail section I have to cut some of the gear track off so it would slide in here and cut the rails to length. We have to trim the other axis rail that will hold the torch. Nothing really exciting there, nothing spectacular that I have to show you guys. So I'll do that off camera. Um, but I think we're getting to the limit on the length of this video where I want to be. Because I know some of you all have some short attention spans kind of like I do so we're gonna leave this video a little short this should be the end of part two so that's it for this one guys part two of the sort of flat CNC plasma table conversion but before I let you go one last thing check out Steve's website Mayhem Metalworks I'll put a link in the description I'll even put it up on the screen I don't think it was his intention but he is actually going to be a sponsor for this video all the work he put into these brackets and the assistance that he's given me. I couldn't do this video series on this plasma CNC conversion without him. 
So he's going to be an honorary sponsor. Big shout out to him. Again, go check out his stuff. And if you have any questions about any of the processes he can do, hit him up. And if there's any custom stuff that you have questions about, it doesn't matter what it is. If it needs to be CNC cut, he's the dude. Uh, if you're going somewhere else, you're screwing up. Seriously, go talk to this man. He is a legend. But that's it. Big shout out to Steve. And until next time, get up, get out there and do it.